So we're going to talk about membranes. Uh, right here we have the cytoplasm membrane. We get this from osteogenics. You can get cytoplasm in a whole lot of different places. So at the end of the day, you know, just make sure that you get a, a product that you're comfortable with. Osteogenics is pretty reputable, but Maxius and some of our other partners also super reputable with amazing products. So the cytoplasm membrane, uh, we are going to use the vast majority of, of them are going to be on socket preservation, where you extract a tooth, you have the whole crest open, and you want to let the tissue granulate in. You don't always want to get primary closure because that's going to just create unevenness in the tissue. You're going to have to do periosteal releases. You don't have enough keratinized gingiva to pull the tissue that much. Letting the tissue granulate in is a sound practice. And so in these areas, the cytoplasm membranes are going to work well. We leave them in for four weeks, and then you just literally pluck it right out. You don't get the patient numb at all, and it works wonderfully. They also have um, different sizes mm -hmm. in these. Um, so depending on how big or little you want the cytoplasm membrane, um, they have different sizes for you to pick from. Yep, yep, that's a really good point. And then also kind of pulling on that thread, you don't want the cytoplasm membrane touching the adjacent teeth. You need to trim it in a way where like papillas can form and you don't want to, oh, you don't want to have it be too big in terms of where it's kind of approximating to. So uh, approximation and trimming it to size is going to be really important. And if you have a missing buckle plate, you can actually extend your cytoplasm membrane all the way down and cover all of that dehiscence and all of that opening and graft inside of it. And it's going to preserve that wall really, really nicely. You can also have your cytoplasm with titanium meshes in there to hold the space a little bit more aggressively. The only issue I have with these is if the tissue phenotype or biotype isn't thick enough, we see an increased risk of incision line opening over these. So you got to make sure you get really good closure over the top or if you're gonna leave it slightly open, you have good approximation of the tissue, but we see the tissue dehiss, you know, on these uh, often. So again, make sure you know the product you're using. This is gonna be good for holding the shape of certain areas uh, if you're having, you know, a buckle wall missing or you have a, a multiple wall defect. Over here, you're gonna have just your Stroman Membrane Flex. It's gonna be your standard collagen membrane. Um, the Strawman Membrane Plus, kind of in the same category. The only difference here is going to be on the, the length in terms of how long it lasts. Both are good collagen membranes for, and resorbable membranes for just covering up a graft material or something where you just have an area where you want to hold the space a little bit better. If you want to use a tacking kit or a Profix kit, I like to use a rubber dam punch on these membranes. So you create a small hole and then you drill your screw through it and fixate it down to the bone. And then the next collagen membrane you can get is from Osteogenics. It's gonna be the Cytoplast RTM collagen membrane. Now keep in mind, Osix has really good membranes. Uh, BioHorizons, I don't like their implants as much, but they have some good membranes and biologic choices. But the Cytoplast one here from Osteogenics is just gonna be a longer lasting collagen membrane to use as well. well Memlock from BioHorizons is cross-linked membrane. They last a really long time. They adapt really well. It's a really nice membrane. Uh, when we get into our pericardiums, this is going to be a bovine pericardium. It's a Jason membrane from Strawman. Pericardium is going to last for about 8 to 12 weeks. Use it in your block rafting. Use it in areas that you need the, the membrane to stick around a little bit longer. And it also um, is going to pack a little bit better of a punch than your just traditional collagen membranes. Your Maxius, you get your pericardium as well. It's gonna be apples to apples in terms of this versus your Jason. So it's just kind of vet out your vendor, whoever you're more comfortable with. Um, it's gonna be the same thing. Bio Exclude, this stuff is really amazing stuff, but it's also insanely expensive. I like to use it if there's a tear over the sinus membrane, it patches that up really nicely. Or if I'm in a, a case where the patient has a lot of comorbidities and I'm really worried about them healing appropriately, I'll use it and then suture over the top so I can really stimulate good tissue growth because it's amnion, chorion, there's a lot of growth factors that are tied into this one and the body accepts it really, really nicely. Maxius also has their laminar bone. This is a really thin piece of allograft that's a, a bone-like material and it's flexible but it holds its, its uh, presence a little bit better. So what I like to do on this one is, I talked about rubber dam punching your collagen membranes earlier. You can't really rubber dam punch these. What you need to do is make a small hole with your scalpel, and then you screw your, your screw in through that little hole, or you're gonna crack the little thin sheet of bone. 
but if we have a huge defect, I like to, to screw down my laminar bone over the top and it helps preserve the site. And then inside, I pack a whole lot of autogenous bone and then you can either suture or bend it over the top because it's flexible, you can bend it over the top. But remember, if you bend it, it's gonna put a little extra tension into your sutures. You gotta just make sure you really secure that guy down. Uh, it works really, really well. I'm a huge fan of it. Then we come into our um, like dermal type materials. So the Maxius Dermal Matrix, you gotta hydrate for a while. I like hydrating with metronidazole in the beginning. Also, you have your Strawman um, Allograph material, this Dermal Matrix. This one here is, is a good one. The only thing is it expands a little bit under the tissue. So if you don't have really adequate passivity of your tissue, it can expand and it can open your sutures. So be careful when you're gonna use it that you have adequate passivity of the tissue over the top. And then also what I like with BioHorizons is their Alloderm GBR. It's a really thin uh, dermal matrix that sometimes even if there's a micro opening, you can leave open and the tissue will heal over the top. So it's another good thing. I mean, I don't love everything from BioHorizon, but there's a few things I really do like, whereas the Memlock and that uh, Alloderm GBR is another good product to consider. At the end of the day, if you know your materials, you know when to use them, and the only true way to know is to talk to a mentor or to experiment a little bit on your own. So I kind of lean into the camp of talking to mentors when you have a case presenting itself because then you can hopefully uh, overcome some of these obstacles. So knowing your materials is really gonna help you be a little bit more successful in your surgeries. And so hopefully this video added some value. When it comes to Colorado Surgical and your implementation over here uh, during one of our live patient surgical courses, make sure to talk to Michaela pull the right membrane. She's a wealth of knowledge. You can kind of show her the situation and she can kind of comment in terms of what you might want to use in that scenario. And also reach out to the mentors in the room and find out, hey, like I want to kind of test out a few different membranes and they'll tell you what they think is going to be clinically advisable in that situation. So you can get hands-on experience with some of these products. And if you get hands-on experience at the courses, then you can take that home a little bit more confidently uh, to your patients and your community.